craze in America. Back and forth all day long. Biceps, triceps, glutes. I don't even know where those are, but I'm working them. Skim till it hurts. Feel the burn. Today I'll take a bus back in time and meet some students that totally dig plants. Then I've got some odds and ends to deal with around my yard. Plus, how to shade your space and still have room for a view. Over the years, I've visited a number of children in their educational programs. I've always been inspired by their enthusiasm when planting and nurturing plants. That's why when I heard about Roger Bessie and his high school horticultural program, I took a bus back in time. For a decade, Roger has been teaching a two-year program that covers everything from plant physiology, vascular systems and propagation, to landscape design, installation, and maintenance. This program is so cool for school. The greenhouse. Yes, this is the original structure. This is the, uh, the building that got the whole program started here at Black Hills High School. Right now we have a poinsettia crop that will hopefully be ready by uh, November. You propagate those in here? Yes, we do. We actually do a lot of propagation of those plants by seed. What we're doing right now throughout at this time of the year is I'm getting the kids uh, developing skills in vegetative propagation and division. Then we will work into uh, seed propagation later on in the spring. The greenhouses operate all year to house the plants the students have propagated. These vary depending on the season, but currently include hellebores, hakoni grass, and poinsettias. The hope is to instill in the students the importance of climate control and how to nurture good, strong plants. In effect, the students ideally embrace a sense of positive reinforcement when their plants succeed. Oh, Roger, you got the shade house full of roadies, one of my favorites. Yeah, these are some uh, dwarf uh, rhododendrons, uh, the Cusamanum varieties, and we started these as rooted cuttings a few years ago. Of course, moved them up. They're now a three-gallon container, and they're ready uh, for people's yards. They're super healthy. And check out these pieris. Our school colors being blue and red, I'm always looking for uh, plants that have something blue, something red with, on them. In addition to having school spirit, the students of Black Hills reuse and recycle all their plant containers. Plus, during the spring, all of the perennials they grow will be out there with signs and tags for customers to purchase. Profits are then recycled back into the program. And these are lessons that they can use throughout life, whether they're going to become a professional horticulturist, for instance, or they're just going to be a casual gardener. But wait, are we going to be late for our lesson, Roger? I'm going to be giving you a demonstration on another form of propagation. This one is division. By the end of the period today, I'm going to have some of you continue taking cuttings of the plants, especially the uh, alternifolia plant right there. And then I'm going to have some of you actually potting up the divisions. Roger wastes no time. He starts by demonstrating how to divide a snake plant. He takes a trowel and cuts right through it. We have a plant, roots, stems, leaves. It's got everything it needs. All it needs now is to be put into a pot. These students pick up quick. They certainly have a trowel, I mean a handle, on this division stuff. Let's check in on some of them. So out of one plant you got how many? Two, a lot. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. All right. You two like this class? Yeah. yeah. So you really feel like you've learned something about plants? I know a lot more than I did. They totally love me already. Can't you tell? Hey, you guys are wearing gloves over here. These students are taking stem cuttings from an alternifolia and dipping them in a plant growth hormone, endobutyric acid, in a process known as vegetative propagation. Did I just hear you say it's like cloning? Yeah. Well, you're absolutely right, because when you vegetatively propagate a plant, you're getting the identical genetic equivalent of the mother plant. And sometimes plants started from seed may take years to bloom, but if they're vegetatively propagated like this, they'll usually bloom pretty quickly. Now, something else I was going to tell you. What do you know? Really? Uh, just that if you, if, if you, um, what do they know? Since these students seem to know it all. Holly, you missed the spot. Oh, thanks. Ah, saved by the bell. 
the second year students to the program get to dig a little deeper. And by dig, I mean dig. They actually get to design and build their very own landscape on the school's property. Last year's students teamed up with their art class to build this creative corner, each tile being individually designed by students and staff. I do have one question though, who does the weeding? Yeah, that's part of like the detention program or something? Or It can be, yes. Yeah. So if I were to get out of line, for instance, then weeding could be my that punishment? Could, that could be the punishment. I think it uh, would be sort of appropriate since you should know how to weed, but you do know how to behave. This year, students have selected blue and red rhododendrons, as well as a spectacular Japanese maple as their focal point. Okay, now, I need to have some pretty strong individuals be on both sides of that and grab that tree right at the base. There's my cue. By the way, it should be noted that this isn't any ordinary group of students. These kiddos won best of show in a recent garden show. How's that for an A-plus crew? One of the goals initially in the start of the class is that these kids probably have never looked at a plant. They, you know, video games, cars, you know, the usual for high school students. So one of the goals is to get them interested in plants. Uh, you know, like, wow, that's a cool plant. That would be the greatest response from a student at this time. One thing's for sure, the program here at Black Hills High School left me feeling young and rejuvenated. Just goes to show you're never too old to play in the dirt. Coming up, time to clean things up with a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And are your pots colliding with your umbrella space? See how to make your containers do double duty. HGTV wants you to dream big. Dream big. HGTV is making dreams come true. Start at home. Check this out. Benny still pays for a big expensive broker. <laughs> well, he, he's a friend of my father's, though. <laughs> <laughs> Take control with one of the most powerful investing machines there is at E-Trade. Grace is power. Introducing the all-new TL, the most powerful Acura ever built. It seems like you always need something around the house. Now you can find it for less around the corner. Introducing Affordable Essentials from Walgreens. The products you use most, now for less every day. I ask you to be as impartial as you can be, and I thank you for your service. Court adjourned. The dash of desperation. Counselor, you need counsel. I know. I gotta go all the time. And I'm at the mercy of the court. You could have an accident with lots of witnesses. Maybe you should have the Detrol discussion with your doctor. Detrol? Detrol LA. The brand doctors prescribe most to help calm those frequent sudden urges. That gotta go feeling. Just one pill works all day and all night. At DetrolLA.com, you'll learn how to get the discussion started. If you have certain stomach problems, glaucoma, or trouble getting urine to pass, you shouldn't take Detrol LA. The most common side effects are dry mouth headache, constipation, and abdominal pain. Having the Detrol discussion with your doctor can make a difference. I rest my case. Millions enter to win the biggest prize in TV. Only one dream will come true. Who will win? HGTV Dream Home Giveaway tonight at 8, 7 central. I've got a few odds and ends to deal with today. Beginning with putting the finishing touches on a new display area I built for my newest collection of plants. Namely, my bonsai. Here on this brick wall, I've installed a cedar shelf and added a bamboo fence that I bought online to serve as a backdrop, which I think will make my bonsai really stand out. 
I also bought these cute little bamboo plant stands online. They came in three different sizes, and I love the way they complement the bamboo fence. Now, I don't know about you, but I think bamboo and bonsai go together like, well, like meat and potatoes. Although I suppose fish and rice would be a better analogy. There's only one thing wrong with this display. These sumacs are bugging me. On the one hand, I love these shrubs, but they're competing with the bonsai. So reluctantly, I'm going to cut them down. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to prune some of the low-growing branches on this hackberry. Oh yeah, I think that looks a whole lot better. Although I got to tell you, I'm really going to miss those sumacs, but they'll grow back. And by the way, this is an important lesson in plant placement, both in a situation like this, as well as in the garden. You see, when green plants are placed in front of other green plants, the ones in the foreground often get lost. But when green plants are placed in front of a fence, for instance, or when plants of one color are placed in front of plants of a different color, they tend to stand out more, as if to say, look at me, look at me. My next task involves a new piece of driftwood, a rather large and heavy piece of driftwood. Ugh. I just love driftwood which is why I've got several choice pieces scattered about here and there throughout my garden. But now the question is, where's this baby gonna go? Well, this is as good a spot as any, and I just love the hole in the trunk. Now, at some point, I may actually stick a plant in it, but for now, I'm content to enjoy it as is, where is. Up next are a few new evergreens to add to my already extensive collection, none of which I've ever grown before. Specifically, I've got two pines and a cedar. Well, sort of a cedar anyway. This is Pinus resinosa, a dwarf species of red pine called morel that I fell in love with the moment I saw it. After all, I love pines and morels. It's a relatively slow growing beauty that's hardy to zone three with needles that are oh so soft. Here's a Japanese red pine called Pinus densiflora globosa, which simply means it'll maintain a globe shape. It's hardy to zone four. Finally, here's an Alaskan cedar, which, by the way, isn't a cedar at all, but rather a false cypress in the genus Camiciparus. It's a long story, folks. Suffice it to say that conifer taxonomy can sometimes be a tad confusing. At any rate, this Alaskan cedar slash Camiciparus is hardy to zone five. And if you'd like to learn more about plant hardiness, just click on hgtv.com slash zone. At any rate, I've decided to plant the Pinus densiflora in a pot which is something I often do with plants I'm unfamiliar with. That way, I can move it around from time to time to determine just how much sun or shade it prefers. As for the other pine and the Alaskan cedar, I'm going to leave them in their distinctive boxes, at least until fall. Now, most of the time, plants are far better off in the ground than in pots. But summer is just around the corner. In fact, temperatures are already in the 90s. And here in my neck of the woods, summer-planted conifers don't do all that well, especially when placed in full sun, which is what both these plants need. By leaving them in their boxes, I can place them in a spot where they get a good blast of morning sun followed by afternoon shade. And here by the patio, I'll be able to water and mist them regularly, at least until I can give them a permanent home this fall. Time now for a quick water garden. And when I say quick, I mean quick. I'll simply fill this glazed pot with water and add a large container of equisetum, better known as horsetail rush. I love this plant, and although it can sometimes be invasive when planted in the ground, in a pot it'll continue to grow but have nowhere to go. Beautiful, isn't it? Years ago, a friend gave me this desert rose, a succulent in the genus Adenium. I've really fallen in love with this plant, so much so that I bought another one. So now I have one with pinkish red flowers, which haven't quite opened yet, and one with white flowers, which are fully open. These babies are only hardy to about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but they overwinter well as houseplants. And believe it or not, they can grow to about five feet. Here's another cool plant from the tropics. Care to guess what it is? Hang on, I'll give you a hint. That's right, it's a coconut. It's a type of palm that's only hardy to zone 10, but which can easily be overwintered indoors as a house plant. I'm gonna plant this guy in a tall pot because that's what palms prefer. And I'm putting it in a medium-sized pot for two reasons. One, palms don't mind being pot-bound, and two, I'll have to move it inside at some point, so the smaller the pot, the better. 
Well, that takes care of today's odds and ends. And now it's time for me to ride off into the sunset. Next, need some shade but don't want to move your potted beauties? Bring the shade to them with an umbrella pot. Then, we address my overgrown pond. Whether you're shopping for your first place. Oh, this is awesome. Or looking for something that has real potential. Wow. The search can be overwhelming. HGTV's Open House Sunday lineup has what you need to know now. That is awesome. Real advice. Anyone should be able to do it. Real information. I just want to make a lot of little changes. Real answers to your questions about real estate. Not bad, right? Open House Sunday. Today, beginning at 10.30 on HGTV. No importa dónde vivas, la vida del océano depende de ti. Para ayudar a proteger nuestro océano, recicla y desecha tu basura apropiadamente. Para saber lo que puedes hacer, visita keepoceansclean.org. Cooler calling conversation, future phone communication, stellar sound solution, super bingo, voicemail on computer, TV, phone, PC connected, caller ID, friend detected, football smack talk so amusing, teasing Ted when his team's losing. Oh man. Phone fantastic, working harder, home phone email, genius smarter, speeding forward, future hopping, always dreaming, never stopping, C-O-M-C-A-S-T. The sensitivity was caused by my brushing too hard. I went to the dentist. He was poking around. He found the spots. And he said, are those spots sensitive? He recommended that I use Sensodyne. I noticed that it was working when I was drinking cold things, and I wasn't even thinking about it. I never thought a toothpaste could fix that problem. someone special in six months. Guaranteed. Visit Match.com, where 20,000 new people join every day. Incredible. Daisies in every color. No way. Cyclamen. In purple? Spring starts at Lowe's. Come see our enormous selection of plants and flowers, specially selected for your area. Are those geraniums? And it's all at everyday low prices, guaranteed. Lowe's, let's build something together. Ask for 10% off your first purchase on your new Lowe's Consumer Credit Card account. Approaching Domina Head. Special request. Cracked pepper turkey breast. Mmm, looks glam. She'll have brown sugar baked ham. Oh my, oh me. That lunch meets bourgeoisie. First class. They roast the turkey with the honey. Then slice it up, it's money. Rotisserie stacked high makes a sandwich go bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bang, bang, choo-choo train. Eat lunch meat on the aeroplane. When I say Hillshire, you say farm. Hillshire. Farm. Go meat. Planted containers add color and interest to the garden. Likewise, an umbrella and chairs make an enjoyable place to view the pots. But what do you get when the pots and umbrella collide? For starters, you get a project that's right up garden writer Julie Chai's alley. Umbrellas take up a lot of space in the garden, and most stands aren't that attractive. But one way to get some shade in a sunny small spot is to make your containers do double duty. We're double duty on projects, too. An umbrella pot and a paving stone. We'll need an umbrella, a large pot, plants, lava rocks, water, a mixing tray, a mask, a trowel, concrete, ABS pipe, screening material, several dowels, a level, a brick, gloves, and some tools for mixing. For the umbrella pot, Julie is using good old fence post concrete. I've poured about half of my 50 pound bag of fence post concrete into my tray, and now I'm just gonna start adding some water, just a little bit at a time, and then start working the concrete until it's about the consistency of crumbly cookie dough. A good rule of thumb, it's easy to put water in, not so easy to take it out. You just want to make sure you keep some concrete on hand so that you can add more if you need it, if you've gotten too much water in there. Now to prep the pot. Julie's cut a piece of screening material that covers the drainage hole in the pot. 
I'm going to pour about one inch of lava rock into my container to secure the to secure the screen. And I'm using lava rock just to give some heft to the pot, but it's not too heavy. The ABS pipe or plastic vent pipe goes in next, but before you add cement, make sure it slips snugly over the umbrella pole. It should stand about eight inches taller than the pot. And I'm just going to take a look from above and see if that looks roughly in the center of the container, which it looks pretty much in the center to me. My goal is to fill this a little bit more than halfway with the rock and the cement. Make sure the pot is at least 15 inches tall with a fairly broad base. That'll help distribute the weight so the whole thing won't topple in the wind. Now I'm going to add my cement. And I'm going to hold my pipe in place as much as I can while I do this. And I'm just going to try and get, you know, two to three inch layer of cement in there. And that cement, of course, adds even more weight to anchor the pot. So now I'm going to even it out. And if you're wearing gloves, you can do this just with your hand. It's fine. And I just want to get it even, so I'm going to pack it in with a brick that I had laying around. You don't have to work this too hard, but just kind of make sure you don't have any big air bubbles. Make sure to leave six to eight inches of room above that base in the pot for soil and plants. Now I've cut some dowels that I'm going to insert into the cement through to the lava rock so that I have drainage so I can plant my plants. Three or four drainage holes ought to do it. And then check one more time to make sure the pipe is level. Hey, that's pretty good. Wouldn't want an off-kilter umbrella, now would we? Set the container somewhere out of the way to dry thoroughly. Now this concrete is cured for a couple days, so we're ready to plant. And I'm just going to fill in my pot with a little bit of soil. And I've chosen plants that are going to fill in and get tall enough to cover the pipe. Any plant that isn't deeply rooted and can handle shade should work pretty well. And we're just going to stick our umbrella in the pipe. And we've got our shade and a beautiful pot. Now, since we've got our mixing supplies out, I'm going to show you one more project. To pave the way for this project, Julie is using mortar for a more refined finish. Homemade pavers are a great way to add a custom touch to your garden. You can add anything to them, like river rocks, or sea glass, or even shells that you've picked up from the beach. They're easy, and expensive, and super fast. One 10-pound bag of stucco will make a paver the size of a rectangular nursery half flat. Same drill on the water, add just a little bit at a time. You want all of the dry stucco mixed in. You don't want any of this light stuff. And if you don't like that light stuff, add some color. Now I think I have this about the consistency that I want, so I'm going to add some liquid cement color. You can also get it in a powder form. And this is great if you just want to add some color to your paver so that it's not just a regular gray color. The consistency you're after resembles creamy mashed potatoes. Now we're ready to pour our stucco into our mold. And I'm just going to use a plastic half flat from the nursery and line the bottom with a sheet of heavy plastic cut to size. And then I'm just going to start mushing my stucco into it. Mushing would be the technical term for pressing firmly. Now we're ready to start adding our objects. And for things like these shells that have a concave center, we're going to kind of fill those, we're just going to kind of fill those in with a little bit of our stucco so that they don't crack when stepped on. Then decorate to your heart's content. Going to give it a couple more good shakes just to settle all of our objects. And if it's cool, you can just set your paper aside to dry for a couple days. But if it's warm outside, you can take some damp towels and just lay them over the top and set a sheet of plastic on top so that it dries evenly. A few days after it's dry, place it in the landscape and then get comfy in the shade of the brand new umbrella pot. Remember to water your plants just like you do with all your other containers and now you've got an umbrella that stands up to the sun and a container that stands out in your garden. Coming up, the plants around my pond are doing great. So great, I can hardly see it. Michael Somerville is FLN's wingman. He gives hopeless daters the skills they need to get back in the game. You want me to go up to them? Yes. And maybe score a date. Wingman, Tuesdays at 9, only on FLN. 
We're the O'Tools, and we're in our backyard before the big transformation. We would like our yard to be a beautiful place that kids want to bring their friends to. Our family is very active, and we like to spend a lot of time outside. We'd like our yard to feel like an oasis for our family. How do we feel about our yard? I think we're going to end up living out here. <laughs> Troy Built. Built for life. Last night, storms were brewing and raining all over town. But I woke up and, baby, I saw sunshine shining down. Love your lawn and garden? So do we. For the month of March, save 10% on select mowers at our Savings by the Yard event. Check out TroyBuilt.com for details. It's been a childhood dream to own your own business, your company, your vision, your risk. Get your business started right by forming a corporation or LLC. BizFilings.com will protect your assets and keep you in the game. Visit BizFilings.com for a free guide to incorporation and the chance to win $5,000 for your business. BizFilings.com. Incorporate your dream. Hey, guys. Hang on. Dad, Daisy wants to know how your internet dating is going. What? You're the one who switched us to T-Mobile. When you can talk to your faves all you want, things come up. Just because we have unlimited calling doesn't mean you have to tell everyone everything. So I shouldn't have told Kathy to tell her grandma you're available? What? She thinks you're super delicious. What does she look like? T-Mobile My Faves for Families. Each family member gets unlimited calls to each other and unlimited calls to their own faves. Only from T-Mobile. Kids, work, time for friends. A hectic life can make you feel run down and may weaken your natural defenses. Then Active can help. How? Unwanted substances enter your body every day, reaching your intestine where about 70% of your immune system is located. When your defenses are weak, gaps may occur in your intestine wall, allowing unwanted substances to pass. Dan Active with LKCI Immunitas works right there, which may help your body close the gaps and help strengthen your body's defenses to help you not miss a beat. You know, a lot of people think that because I'm the gardener guy, I don't have garden problems, and that my place is always pristine and picture perfect. Well, I gotta tell you something. Nothing could be further from the truth. Truth is, I have lawn problems, weed problems, plant problems, not to mention drainage problems. In other words, I have many of the same garden problems you have. And my latest problem is right here at my koi pond. Now, don't get me wrong, I love this pond with its gently flowing, crystal clear stream and cascading waterfalls. Actually, the pond itself isn't the problem at all. The problem is the plants in and around the pond. On the one hand, the aquatic plants are beneficial because they act as biological filters and thereby help keep the water clean. But virtually all the aquatic plants, and most of the terrestrial ones as well, are simply overgrown. Of course, that also means they're healthy and happy, but too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. And in my case, the plants are so healthy and happy that from a number of angles, I can't even see the pond. Take this umbrella plant, for example. It's not even supposed to be hardy in my area, yet it survived three winters. I knew this Louisiana iris was hardy, but I didn't know it would grow so thick and wide, or in such a peculiar pattern. And check out this water mint. I knew it would spread. After all, it's a mint, but I didn't realize how fast it would spread. And these grasses, beautiful though they may be, block the best views of both the stream and the pond. So you see, I have problems too, but trial and error is all part of the fun of gardening. Gardening's about learning what works in your yard and what doesn't. But in the case of my pond, it's about what works too well. Because even though I'd like to cut back, divide, or outright remove some of the plants, it's the wrong time of the year. You see, it's fall, and although I could certainly remove any of these plants this time of year, cutting them back as well as digging and dividing them are tasks best done in spring. But that's okay, because by then I'll have a better idea of which plants will stay and which will go, and I promise I'll show you that process. Besides, my whole point in showing you my pond problem today was merely to make sure you don't make the same mistake I did. 
If you'd like to learn more about anything you've seen on today's show, just go to hgtv.com slash gardening by the yard.